Hi, in this video, I am going to talk about how you can perform auto visualization of your data set using a tool called AutoViz. It's an open source tool. Uh, you can download it, you can install it, and you can play around with it. It's, it's from the same creators of AutoVimal, which is an uh, automated machine learning tool. So basically, if you feed the data, it will identify the right model that fits the data and give you the best model. I have a separate video for AutoVimal. If you want to go and check it out, you can click the link on the top and you can watch that video. But in this for in this particular video, we are going to focus about more or more on auto visualization tool. So why do we need an auto visualization tool? So typically when we start playing with a data set or when we get a data set, the very first thing we do is we do a data analysis or exploratory data analysis of the data. We try to understand the distribution of data. We try to understand the correlation of each variable with the target variable. So that's where we spend a lot of time. Now think about uh, a data set where you have 100 of features. It's very difficult to go across and take each and every feature to understand the distribution and correlation with the target variable. So if you start doing it manually with all the matplotlib and seaborn package and everything, it's going to consume a lot of your effort. So is there a way we can take the data, feed the data and get the visualization report uh, for you to use it uh, further, for you to consume it and use it further or go and prepare more advanced charts that are required or go and do like multivariate analysis uh, uh, further. And that's where the auto visualization package comes into play. And it's as simple as just running a single line of code to get all the charts. So, uh, but but uh, in order to get that, I'm just going to give you a background about the data set I'm going to use so that you get better idea. So let's just start, get started. So what I'm doing is I am uh, importing uh, basically all the required packages, pandas and numpy, and also the URL lib. The data is in my GitHub repo, so I want to pull the data into my local system. So I am importing it. Now, pandas and numpy NumPy is not required for auto visualization. You can directly feed the file, uh, but I, I just want to show the data before I get there, right? Then I'm setting these two variables. So basically what I'm telling is I have the data in my GitHub repo. I want to download it into my local directly. So I'm setting my base directly as slash TMP and I am giving the file name as churn underscore data dot CSV. So the file from my GitHub repo will be downloaded and kept in this path slash TMP slash churn data or CSV. Then I'm going to the URL try function of URL lib package and giving my GitHub repo where the data is. And I'm telling you download it, it put it in the output file. The output file, as you see on the top, is nothing but slash temp uh, slash uh, slash temp slash churn underscore data dot CSV. So that's what I'm doing, doing over here. Let me run this. After this step, the data will be downloaded from my GitHub repo to the local system. Now, a quick background about this data. Basically, the data contains information about uh, a about the customers who are chummed from a telecom company. It has information about the customer demographics, what is the gender, whether it's a senior citizen, whether they have a partner in their uh, building, whether there are dependents in their building, and what is the tenure of the customer. And there are information about the products that customer is using. Are they using an online security? Are they using internet services? Are they using phone services? If they are using phone services, do they have multiple lines? Do, uh, do, do they have tech support? Right, these are the information. Finally, there is information about the uh, customer billing details. Details, what is the monthly charges? What is the total charges? And finally, there's a variable called churn, uh, which which basically says whether the customer has churned or not. So uh, what I'm doing is I am reading that output file, assigning it to a pandas data frame, and then I'm just printing uh, the first few lines so that you can visualize the data. You can see here that a lot of these variables are categorical variables, like uh, gender, even senior citizen, even though it's numeric, it's a categorical variable, but zero or one. Uh, you can see like a lot of these variables are categorical variables, uh, right? And and the monthly charges and total charges are uh, more like uh, continuous variables. And finally, you have the churn column, which says whether the customer has churned or not. No means the customer has not churned. S means the customer has churned. Now, let's quickly see if there's a missing value. You don't have to do that, but I just want to uh, get to a couple of more lines before we go into autoviz. So what I'm doing is in this, in this data set, the missing value is represented by space and not by uh, not by like null or not a number. So what I'm doing is I'm just uh, checking where there's a space and converting it to not a number and then doing is a dot sum. So if you quickly run it, you can see like most of the columns are not null, but only the total charges column has like 11 values that are null. So I'm just quickly going to replace the uh, data frame wherever there is a uh, uh, space, just put it null. I'm still not replacing the value. It's still going to be null. Only thing I'm making it like not a number rather than space. 
and I'm printing quickly printing the output. So if you see the output of this particular data set, there are 7,043 uh, rows and 21 columns. And these are the features. And as you saw, like missing value is there in the monthly charges, sorry, total charges column. And then what are the unique values? Gender has two unique values, yes, uh, male and female, and then senior citizen as uh, zero and one. So it shows all the unique values uh, based on the column. There are 73 tenues. Tenues is basically what is the tenure of the customer? How long he has been a customer so there are these are the information now let's quickly get started with the auto -vis package as I said, it's pretty simple. It's going to be just few lines of code. Uh, to install AutoVis package, you are just going to use pip install AutoVis and that will install the package with all the dependency that is required. Right. Now, what I'm doing is I'm just first time importing AutoVis, uh, uh, like AutoVis underscore class from the AutoVis package. And I'm just creating like an AutoVis uh, object over here. Right. So I have this KV package. It just shows you how to use it. What are all the different functions you you want? How many rows you want to get analyzed? How many columns you want to get analyzed? What is the charge format? And uh, those those information as that. What are dependent variable? What is the file name? And what is a separator? So our file name is churn underscore data dot csv tmp. That's what I'm giving. The separator is comma. So what I'm doing is next I am uh, taking that KV object and using the auto -vis function, and then I'm giving uh, the file name the separator is comma in first case i'm not giving a dependent variable right i'm going to leave it null and reminding some information i'm giving ver verbose equal to one so that you can see like output if you don't want verbose you can just put it zero right and then i'm giving a, i'm i'm giving all the rows it's 7043 rows i'm just giving 7500 i'm giving all the columns to analyze so once i run it since i have not given a target variable you will more get uh, details to details on uh, the individual variable distribution so to quickly see on from the top, if you see just with one line of code, right, you have all the information. It's giving you some background also uh, of yeah, there are 21 predictor classified, two variables were removed since they were ID column. There was one customer ID column or there's a low information variable that is a total charges column uh, because the monthly charges is more relevant. The total charges might not be. It's also showing the distribution of each variable, how many unique values are there and everything. And if you scroll down further, you can see like a lot of plots. Uh, that has come in and these plots are just like distribution plots because uh, you don't have the dependent variable that I have given so it's just telling you like okay paperless billing uh, basically how many uh, oh yeah there's yes and no there's, there are how many users are having paperless billing not uh, what is the distribution of churn column the churn is the target column in our case uh, most of the data the customer has not churned but some data the customer has churned so basically it's an uh, it's an imbalanced data set there are there are like yeah, the yes category is very less so when you're modeling it you want to account for it what is the distribution of streaming tv how many people have how many people uh, do how many people do not have how many people have and similarly what is the distribution of senior citizens so basically uh, there are very less senior citizens compared to the normal so you can see distribution of each and every variable layer for example the tenure uh, which is a which is kind of a continuous variable if you can you can bucketize it it's not a pure continuous variable but if you see here the distribution most of the uh, tenure uh, data is on the lower end uh, between like say like uh, 10 or uh, between 10 to 20 right and after that like it uh, it kind of uh, decreases right and then uh, you have the monthly charges so most of the monthly charges are in the lower range and then uh, then higher because uh, most of the people will have only single service if they have a lot of service with the same provider the charges may be higher so it's a combination of both so you're just getting like on an individual variable how the distribution looks like and what you are done, you are just given a single line of code, right? Now let's go further and analyze uh, with the dependent variable. So you want to see how does each variable in the input correlate with the target variable. And that's what you are doing. The only thing I'm doing is now, I've given the same information, only thing the dependent variable I have said, what is my dependent variable, right? So let me quickly run this out. And again, you are, uh, I have given the verbose zero, so it's going to print uh, less information this time. Uh, now it has given me all the charts over here, right? So let's let's quickly go from the top. You can see like it has see item on monthly charges is a continuous variable. It has given a scatter plot. When there is no, when the churn is not that, basically you can see the data getting distributed uh, across evenly. Uh, while the, there are some in the 20 to 30 to 40 range as well, but mostly it's even. But when you see yes, right, you can see like. Uh, 
most of the customers who are churned on on the top monthly charges so maybe as the monthly charges is higher there is high probability uh, for customer to churn right that is one aspect of it now you can go into individual variable and see what is the churn so when they are opted for paper billing yes or no uh, basically you can see like okay uh, the customer has churned uh, who are higher when the paperless billing is turned on and no now again this are just like correlations right do you go to the business uh, understanding and see whether that's really a causation because correlation uh, might be there but it does not make any sense does paper paperless billing really make sense for a customer to be churned um, maybe not right now let's see on the internet service right when there's no internet service uh, the churn s yes, is low whereas uh, when when uh, when 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 streaming tv is there yes and no you can see it's almost evenly distributed so i don't think this variable really makes sense right uh the basically let's go to say same thing partner also uh if you see when there is a partner uh the the churn is there when when there is a no partner to the uh line when then the churn is higher right uh, maybe let's take some prominent variable you can see like histograms and uh, uh basically distribution with the target variable of all the all the like tenure and monthly charges column which are like continuous variable let's quickly see this internet service right so Uh, basically distribution online security rather so online security if you see like uh, the customer who have churned uh, are like pretty high uh, when uh, when they when basically uh, the online security is no right and similarly uh, let's come down the monthly charges is could going to be could very let me just quickly find out the monthly charges so the, the contract rather right i am uh, yeah here is the contract so the contract variable right now when when the contract is month on month typically when people take a month on month contract that means they they want they don't want any uh, kind of long term contract maybe they are they are just travelers who are here they want line for 3 month or 6 months right so if you see the monthly contract variable here when it's month on month the churn is pretty high but once they get into contract as they get into higher contract the churn is pretty low so basically uh, month on month you can see the contract is literally like uh, Forty uh, percent, but on one year the the churn is less, but on two two years it's even less, right? So the contract really makes sense. So uh, make make sure like most of your customers are converted into a more like a contract, and that's why you see in the US most of the companies, uh, uh, telecom companies are giving like uh, phones for free and everything to enter customers into a one or two year contract. So similarly, you can quickly visualize. Um, Uh, visualize the uh, different uh, distribution with the target variable so that you get a better understanding on which variables can contribute which variables cannot be it also gives you like a, a good intuition on your feature selection as well right so uh, it's it's pretty straightforward it's just like one line of code after you install to run it it gives you box plot it gives you lot of plots you can go and play around with it so that's about this uh, auto visualization tool um, uh, and uh, maybe uh, the this team has one more package called auto ts which is auto time series and i will try to get a video uh, of auto ts as well in the future thank you